Hey dolls, so this is just a quick little update on everything. So my last video, I wanted to go live for you guys. Um, I actually looked into it trying to go live and YouTube will not allow me to go live guys because I don't have a thousand subscribers. So unfortunately, until we get a thousand subscribers, I can't go live. So we um, are gonna have to get the subscribers up and then I can start doing regular lives for you guys. But in the meantime, I'm not going to leave anybody hanging. I'm just going to go ahead and do the question answer video um, like I did previously in the past where I'll read out the questions and answer them as I go along. So um, I'll just go ahead and start dropping those. So you'll start seeing those in a couple days. Um, unfortunately, I know it's going to be a pain because if you ask one question, you're just going to have to listen to the videos in, or in order to get the answer to your question. But um you would also be able to, you know, to hear other people's questions, which might have been some stuff that you might not have thought about, which could be helpful. So I'm just going to do that um, until we can get to the point where we can start doing the lives and then I can just start going live with you guys and just answering any and everything that comes to mind. Um, another thing that I wanted to share with you guys today is just my um, measurements. Um, I started taking my measurements right before surgery i did my measurements because i wanted to know exactly where i was and i wanted to be able to monitor um how my body was changing throughout the process so um i like i said i took all my measurements the night before surgery i wrote all those down i think i told you guys about that in a, in a previous youtube video that i wrote them all down so um just to give y'all my measurements right so before surgery my waist was at a 39 and a half my bottom of my stomach was at a 45 and my hips and butt was at a 46. Now, mind you, everybody else is probably not going to be wanting to weigh the bottom, I mean, measure the bottom of their stomach, right? The reason that I measured the bottom of my stomach was because, remember, I was a weight loss patient. So all of that extra skin and the extra fat that I had was all in the lower part of my stomach. As you can see, it was a 45 and my hips and stuff was a 46. So it was just as big as my hips and stuff. Um, and so for me, knowing what that goes down to is a big thing because that was the biggest issue for me i mean obviously yes my waist was huge i mean well i mean it wasn't as big as it was before um i had weight loss surgery but you know my waist was still a 39 and a half so i mean it you know it was still definitely not small so um definitely something that i wanted to address so the next um recorded measurements that i took down and i will say I know I measured myself between when I had surgery and J July 1st, but I was bigger than I was when I, um, I was bigger after surgery than I was before surgery. So I didn't want to write those measurements down. I don't know. It was just kind of a mental thing for me. I just was like, mm. I don't want to record those, but just so you guys know, please expect to be bigger after surgery than you were before. Just expect that. So don't expect that instant gratification and that you're just going to be super excited with everything because I was so swollen and puffy and just all over the place that I was bigger. Um, so anyway, after the, the first recorded um, measurements that I took was July 1st. And on July 1st, my waist had went down to a 34. My lower stomach went from a 45 to a 37 and a half. And then my hips and butt went from a 46 to a 46 and a half. So I'd only gained a half an inch on my butt and hips. Um, but it looked way different. I mean, even now, I, like, I feel like my butts and hips are way bigger. But I think that's just because my waist is now smaller so everything looks bigger that way now if that makes sense i mean i know she added some stuff in there but like i said it when on on measurement it's literally the same um so then the next time i measured myself was on the 17th which was 17 days after the first the 17th was my birthday y'all so that was just last week and that was kind of why i was chilling out too sorry I, I, when I get to sitting, I'll be wanting to stretch because you get stiff. Sorry about that if I'm like moving all awkward. So anyway, on the 17th, I measured my waist and my waist was at a 32 and a half. 
So that was down from a 34 to a 32 and a half and basically two, a little over two weeks. And then my bottom of my stomach went to a 37, which was only a half an inch in those two weeks. And then my hips and butt actually lost a half an inch and I was at a 46. So then on the 21st, I measured myself. My waist had went to a 32, which was a half an inch difference, was just in a couple days. My bottom of my stomach went from a 37 to a 36, which was a whole inch. And my hips stayed the same at the 46. Now, I'm going to tell you the reason why my measurements got so close right there um, is because I have not been able to figure out how to maintain my weight. I keep losing weight. Um, I don't know if me being a weight loss patient is playing a major factor in this, but I cannot stabilize my weight. I keep losing weight and I don't know, like I'm kind of scared to keep losing weight because I'm like, oh dang, if I keep losing weight, I'm gonna lose the fat that they, you know, they put in my butt or whatever. Um, but at the same time, I'm just like, okay, well, I guess I can't control what my body's doing. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm trying to eat as much as I can, but I will tell y'all, I feel like ever since surgery, like my sleeve got smaller. Like I was able to eat bigger portions before this surgery than I am now. So like I have, I was sleeved in 2016. So my sleeve had pretty much opened to where I could eat bigger quantities of food not of course normal to your normal person but way more than the normal sleeve patient could eat um and, and for me it was also sorry y'all i got a phone call and it always messes up my video so anyway um so anyway like i was saying i was sleeved in 2016 as time goes on, your sleep opens, you start to eat more normal. I was able to gain weight. So I got to a point where I could eat enough to gain weight. Like literally the lowest weight that I got down to on my sleeve was 185, no, 180 pounds. That was the lowest I ever got down to on my sleeve. Um, at that time, girl, I thought I was looking good, y'all. You couldn't tell me nothing. But when a couple people told me like, are you done losing weight? And I was like, why would you ask me that? Like, no, nah, I'm trying to get down to 150. Um, everybody was like, yeah, you need, you need to probably stop losing weight. Me at the time, I didn't see that. I was so caught up in the numbers that I wanted to keep losing weight. So when I look back at those pictures after, you know, I got to a point um, and I started gaining weight because it just, it happened naturally. Like I didn't choose to start gaining weight at first. It's just started happening um when i look back at those pictures i'm like god damn why yeah i'm happy i did stop i didn't need to get no smaller so anyway that was the lowest i've ever been was 180 and i felt like i was too small even at 185 i was borderline too small um i feel like i looked my best right between um between like 190 and 200 that's i mean that's where i look my best i have height on me and I have a fairly big head and face, and um, I gotta keep some weight on me. I can't look. I, I'm not. I'm not made to be stick bone skinny. It's just it's not for my body composition, not for my face. It just, it doesn't work for me. Um, and that's another thing that you ladies have to realize is what works for some may not work for you. So you just gotta figure out what works best for you and how you feel you look best. So. Again, the lowest I got to was 180. Now, going into this surgery, I got up to 208. Okay, so I got all the way up to 208 on the day of surgery. That's how much I weighed. After surgery, when I got back to the States, because I never was able to weigh myself, which is weird, y'all. I never uh, was able to weigh myself in the DR other than when the um, anesthesiologist weighed me. To, for the anesthesiologist, that was the only person that ever weighed me in the DR. Dr. Duran didn't weigh me to approve me for surgery or anything. And that's another thing that I thought was so weird because they do all of this about BMI, your BMI, but they never weigh you. So they never actually even test to see if your BMI is what you're saying it is. They just trust what you say. So, um, 
like I said, I didn't weigh myself the whole time I was in the DR, but when I got back to Missouri, I weighed myself. And um, when I got to my sister's house, I was 201. So I was like, okay, so that, you know, extra skin and stomach, you know, took off that extra weight. Okay. So when I have gotten back home, I have noticed I've been back home for going on three weeks now. So um, when I got back home, I noticed that I keep losing weight, y'all. And I can't control it. Like every day I'm waking up and the scale is dropping and I'm eating. Like it's not that I'm not eating. I am eating. I'm, obviously I'm eating clean. I'm eating salads. I'm drinking smoothies. Like I'm eating clean. I'm drinking hella fluids. Um, you know, I'm trying to drink as many fluids as I can. Water, you know, juices, apple juices. I went about all the, you know, these juices and stuff. Um, but anyway, like I'm eating. Um, and then even sometimes I ain't eating clean. Like my birthday, they bought me these little mini cupcakes and I ate them things. So that's another thing. I'm like, okay, I'm fucking eating. I done had cupcakes and all kind of stuff, um, for my birthday. I mean, that wasn't just every day, but I'm eating, but I still keep losing weight. So today when I got on the scale, I was 195. Um, I'm only getting nervous because I'm getting close to that area where I don't want to be. Um, I don't want to get in the 180s. Um, I just feel like I'm, you know, once I get in the 80s, like if I could stay in the higher 80s, I'll be okay. But if, once I get into the mid to lower 80s, I, it don't really work well with me. So um, I'm just trying to figure out before I get to that point how to stabilize my weight. I need to I need to stabilize it. Like if I can stay right here at 195, trust and believe I'm happy, I'm satisfied, we good. Um so yeah i'm just trying to trying to stay here um and so if there are any of my viewers um that are weight loss patients please anticipate this being something that is going to fucking happen like you are gonna feel like your sleeve was redone that's how i feel like sometimes at night like i'll drink and I can't go to sleep right away because I've drank and it's like the water or whatever has to go down before I can lay down, which I have gotten so much better with that before the surgery that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't no issue. It was just like I could drink and lay down, but now it's like stuff is moving slow. And a, a part of me wants to say that it's this damn faha. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but a part of me is wanting to say it's this faha because you got so much compression and it's pulling you in tight and it's like kind of squeezing you that you can't fit stuff down in there. So that's just a thought because I don't think internally they've done anything to my stomach. So it's got to be something that's causing it. Like, and even like the only reason that I'm saying that is because when I put my extra compression on, I don't be drinking anything. When I put that extra compression on, because I already know I feel super tight. Like I actually take that extra compression off if I want to eat and drink. So, um, that's just some stuff that I wanted y'all all to know. Um, but I also wanted to just make this quick little video just to let you guys know that videos are going to be on the way answering the questions and answers and so forth um unfortunately again we can't do the live i would love to do the live y'all yeah, like that that would make my heart beat to just be able to do the live and interact with you guys live like so we gotta get there because that's what i would love to do like i'm a people person i like to talk and interact with people so that would be ideal for me to be able to really just rap with y'all and communicate and go back and forward with y'all so let's get there so we can do that um, and like I said, we can plan after we get to that point where we can do that. We can plan a day a week where we just meet and greet and we talk about not only just me, but you guys. That's why I really want to kind of interact with you guys. Um, and we can compare stories and things like that because I do a lot of that in my um, in my surgery groups. Like, I don't know it all. This is my first round of surgery. I'm going through this journey just like a lot of you ladies. So um yesterday it was a lady in my surgery group and she posted her like six month post-op picture and i was just admiring her body so you know of course i asked the question i'm just like hey you know um this far out i had surgery on this day i'm currently weighing this my you know my measurements are this 
when did you get into the 20s on your waist? Because, you know, again, that's my goal. I want to get to a 28. That's my goal. If I can get smaller than that, great. But a 28 is my goal. I'll be happy on the waist. And so she um, told me that don't expect any of your full results until you're three to about three months. She said when she was three months, that's when she noticed her biggest results. She even showed me pictures from her like a month out up to the three months where she really like saw her butt grow and blossom and then her waist. They also told me that in the DR, um, the, the assistants and everything in the office, they were just like, your butt just magically appears at three at three months because I feel like now that I'm not as swollen, like I'll be feeling like my butt went down. Um, but I know again, I'm not like taking anything, um, I'm not taking anything at heart at this point and being like, oh, I gotta go get another round. I'm just kind of like allowing everything to take its course and do whatever it needs to do, um, and then just hoping that. When I get to that three month mark, or even if it takes me four months or whatever, um, that I at the at the end result that I'm happy with everything. Like I said, stuff is shifting, my waist is changing, it's getting smaller. Um, but um, it's getting smaller, but I also feel like I'm getting smaller. Like, you know, my hips, my butt. I like I feel like I'm getting smaller. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, as time goes and of course it's kind of hard to see your results day to day because you got all these boards in like I keep my backboard my side foams and the one over my stomach and a lot of you probably are wondering why I'm not wearing my ad board yet I cannot because I still have this open incision on my stomach so until that fully closes I cannot wear the ad the ad board the hard one because that would impact my incision so i have to wait until that closes then i can start flattening out my stomach with the ad board because the foams really just kind of add a little bit of compression and protect you from faja burns and stuff but that ad board is what's gonna add that maximum compression to my stomach and flatten it out and i cannot wait to wear it because trust me i have it already i bought it before surgery i just can't use it uh, so, um, yeah, so that's my biggest thing is waiting on that, um, that incision to heal. And you guys actually, if you watch the video that I'm loading right before I load this one or whatever, you'll see my incision and you'll see me like changing it with my, uh, belly button plug and everything. So you'll be able to kind of see, um, you'll, you'll kind of see what I'm working with. So, uh, I'm trying to like, I, at first, I was kind of like, uh, do I show y'all that? But I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to show y'all the real. Um, my shit look fucked up right now, the, the scar. But I do know that it's going to heal the one in the middle. My my hip to hip does not look bad at all. Like, if that was the only scar I had, she did a beautiful job. I would have been fucking amazed and happy. Like, I don't even feel like I needed a tattoo over that. That's how beautiful that scar is. But this scar down the middle is going to be... It's, it's, Mm, we'll see <laughs> we'll see i'm not even gonna make any uh guesses on it i'm gonna do the best that i can to care for it treat it try to lighten it whatever i can do um but you'll see if you watch that other video you'll see what i'm talking about exactly like i'm showing you guys everything i'm not um trying to hide anything from you guys um, but as long as you guys keep being patient with me, that's all that I ask because it is a lot for me trying to heal and, you know, stay up to date with these videos. Like when I was my normal self, I, I feel like I was moving a little bit better than I'm moving now, but we'll get it together. Um, each day is a process. Um, I am going to continue to deliver for you guys and, uh, We'll um, continue to go through this journey together. For any of my dogs who have a surgery coming up soon, I'm sending hugs and many prayers and all of that. I just wanted to start mentioning that because I know a lot of you guys are pending surgery dates. And I want to let you know that, hey, I'm here for you guys just like you guys were here for me. And that's another reason, like I said, where I want to start doing the lives so we can really start communicating um you know on a on a more personable level so that would you know so that i think that'll kind of give us all a little closer knit so anyway 
I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up for now. Next video to come will be the question and answers. We'll start knocking those out, and then we'll go from there. All right, ladies, we'll talk soon. Every single day.